I happen to disagree with a lot of people saying, well, you've, you know, you've got to. You, you've got to make it through. The world's going to be destroyed. Mankind's going to, you know, be revived. And you've got to be one of the ones that carry on to so-and-so. Well, wait, that just voids eternal life. That voids, what's the purpose of eternal life? If you have to save your own self. Hmm? What is the purpose of eternal life if people are going to believe in a scenario where mankind has to save themselves and there's no Christ only his principles no Christ no eternal life no anything and see that too is a but we're learning we're trying to make sense we're trying to, and sometimes we're so smart we become dumb I've noticed that the more I learn in the Word of God the more of an idiot is revealed in me I'm telling you the truth I just a, just an idiot I mean, I will chastise myself saying, are you, I, all these years, I believed nonsense. And here it is. I find out so many things in the Word of God that are so simple. How could I read them all those years? And, and all of a sudden, in, in its time, it hits me in the head, kapoof. And I feel so foolish. Just so foolish. I, I mean, seriously foolish. And it causes me to reverence the Lord. And I'm thankful to my Savior for it. We make things complicated. God never made anything complicated. He put the truth in front of the eyes of all people. The wise will look beyond what's in front of their faces looking for something deeper. But the child will look at what's right in front of their face and they'll say, what's that? See, that's the difference between a child and an adult. An adult already knows the child does not, so a child will ask every single time. The child says, well, what is that? You give a child something, they hold their head back. Then they're just not going to automatically eat it. They'll say, what is that? They do it all the time. If we did that with the Lord and said, wait a minute, Lord, what is that? Instead of acting like we know the answer in our pride, we could be shown so many things. I know this because that's a step. I had to be walked through this thing. You ever read the word of God? Oh, I know that part, know that part, know that part. And you get to go, oh, I want something deep. Right? We do that. That's why we can't see what's forming. That's why people have messed up so many things. And they're, the elite are laughing at the folks. And guess what? They're confused too. Totally taken in by delusion. But their delusion is extremely fearful. You don't want to know what they're doing. You really don't. Like the Illuminati. There are lots of people who write, say, well, what is the Illuminati? You know, what do they really, you don't want to know what they're doing. Because these are groups of high lust. And when I mean high lust, I mean high lust. These are breakers of the commandments purposely. That's what they are. I don't desire to look into them. Because I've seen parts of them. And what they do is deadly. And they are extremely intelligent. As men count intelligence. And they entertain you. And they teach you to crave as they crave. Let me give you an example of something. How many of you have bought shoes in the last year? How many? I'm going to show you. I'm going to teach you something. Maybe you don't know this. I'm going to teach you anyway. Certainly the ladies because they get you the most with shoes, right? How many of you have bought shoes in the last year? <clears throat> right? Now, some people haven't. Some people have. How many of you have bought something new in the last year? Right? And the old thing you had is not that it didn't work. Right? It's not that it was non-functional. But let's be honest. Now, you got to be honest with me on this. But it was, you know, it was outdated. How many bought something because what you had was outdated? Honestly, how many? How many did that? It was outdated, right? Don't tell me if you, because a lot of, you know what a lot of people do? Why don't you have a flip phone? See, because a lot of people say, no, I don't do that. Well, okay, where's your flip phone? Where's your flip phone that works with a SIM card? Where's that at? Where's it at? Anybody? Is it out there? Now, don't, don't tell me you use 
right? 100% of your processing power in the phone's capabilities with each phone. Don't tell me that. Where's your flip phone? Where's it at? Everybody but Oki. Where's your flip phone? Hmm? All right. How many of you have iPhones? You can be honest. I'm using this as an example. Don't worry. We're not pointing you out. Just using this as an example. But how many of you have an iPhone? All right. So you get an iPhone. How many of you know how to use everything on an iPhone? I mean everything. How many? The same people that have an iPhone. How many people, how many people know how to use everything on it? Right? So a lot of people say, no. Some people say, well, you know, that no. Well, the true answer is that nobody knows how to use everything on an iPhone. Most of us, we get a phone, and the, 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 we just dial things. Maybe on occasion we'll listen to something or have a neat feature. But the truth is, we don't want the flip phone because it's out of style. Right? It's out of style, honestly. It didn't have the features that you somebody has convinced you that somehow you need. Right? Why did we do that? Why? What made us go get an iPhone, right, or any other phone with all these added features and not uh, uh, one of those basic, basic, basic phones? What did this? Did you do that by yourself? No. How did you find out through marketing and advertisement? And what do they show you when they do this? Everybody running to get one. So you get one, right? And they keep coming out with the new phones because when you buy one, the phone that you had becomes outdated. And to keep up with the style, you don't want to break out your first, the very first iPhone they ever made while everybody else is running around with iPhone 20s with all those capabilities. Why? Because somebody may say, oh, just do so and so. Well, I don't have that app. Right? I don't have that app. My phone can't do that. Right? My point is this, you didn't get the iPhone because you discovered or had a true need for the iPhone. I mean, I mean a, a, a true need. You got the iPhone because you listened to the words of somebody else and that's what the current generation gets. And the old phones kind of go out of style, but then they come back. I remember when the flip phones went totally out of style. You didn't see them too much. Then some of them came back with new features. Brand new features. They get women with colors, right? High heel shoes, and then the shoes with no heels. And then you see women, they, they will always wear something, someone in style. Because nobody wants to be the one that says, oh, those came out in the 50s or the 20s. You're not going to wear something like that that looks like that, will you? Right? No, because you'll be totally out of style. Right? Totally out of style. You, you, some of you women are not going to wear something they wore in the 1910s. You wouldn't do that. Why? Because it's not in style. And that's the reason why. It's not in style. It's not in style. They do this back and forward. Now listen to me close. They do this for one specific reason. They control the styles. It often comes through children. Right? They make people buy the new thing and throw the old thing away. Listen, I'll say it again. They make people buy the new thing and throw the old thing away. What's that called? That's called economy. You're forced and seduced into spending money all the time. All the time. They create lust within you. You respond because everybody else does it. What does that imply? That we do things that the majority does. And no one wants to be pointed out. Because very few want to be embarrassed. You don't want to be embarrassed. It's embarrassing to have something old. It's embarrassing to have a computer that's 400 pounds. And somebody comes in with an iPad. It's embarrassing that you don't have the capabilities to do this, that, and the other. It's embarrassing. People don't want to be embarrassed. I'm telling you the truth. And so through that symptom of humanity they get all the money they want from you for every dime you make you're going to spend it you're going to spend it on something or create a problem yourself subconsciously sometimes you're going to find a way to spend it 
right? Find a way. These are people in the world's kingdoms of which you're breaking away from. That's how they function and operate. You know why that's important? Because spiritually we do the same thing. We don't want to be embarrassed. That stops some of you from asking certain questions. You should. It stops us from answering truthfully to our Lord in view of other people. It causes us to deny Christ in a lot of ways. But all that's about to go away. Because of a great distress that will come upon mankind. It truly is unavoidable. This morning, briefly, I talked about violence. Something is wrong with today. Very, very wrong. Folks, I'm going to be back. We're going to talk about a piece of technology. Some technology you need to know about. My, my. We have to analyze ourselves further because we're asking for a lot of things here lately. And they're going to give it. And they're not done with the Walmarts. How many of you know about the logistical system of Walmarts and how that began in the first place? I know some of you do. Some of you do. Uh, just a handful may. Somebody asked me about those, a uh, long time ago, about those booms in the skies. There are two answers. But I told them a lot of those booms are not coming from the skies. But under the earth. They had been booming for a long time, many years. You guys remember that? They weren't coming from the sky. They were coming from under, under the earth. Because they were associated with certain ground shakes and things of that nature. But with ground acoustics, sound works a little different. And wouldn't you know it? It happens to align itself with the effect that people were hearing. Which is why some people would hear it. But when you got to certain types of rock, the other folks would not hear it. Because of geology. Not because of anything in the atmosphere, but because of geology. In a lot of cases, to make a tunnel, when you have tunnel boring machines, explosives still have to be used. They have to. A lot of people were hearing that. They were associated with some other things, too. Now we have an issue with sinkholes and we don't hear the booms. Now you just have to, come on, you have to think soberly about these things. After the booms stopped, the sinkholes began. You, you just have to think soberly about this, right? Soberly. I'll be right back, everybody. I'll be, wait a minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see something here. Because we still have a problem. This thing will not go online for the life of it. Folks, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to see if we can uh, start something here really quick. Because I have lost control. How did I lose control? Boy, they just don't. Uh... Guys, I've been fighting throughout this, <laughs> throughout this whole talk. I've been in combat with the computer itself. Go figure. As to be expected, no issue, though. I don't want to ramble. So, guys, if I start rambling, you got to let me know. Please, let me know. Let me know if I ramble, right? Go into a topic that has nothing to do with, with our Lord and Savior. Let me know. Because I am human too, and sometimes I get passionate about certain things that will cause people their lives. I just don't like that, okay? I'm going to be right back here. In a moment. Hey, we're back again, folks. I didn't realize we only have a half hour left. I'm going to give you some insight on something. You guys remember the wave, right? Oh, actually, two things. Two things. For those who have been with us for a long time in COT, you've heard about the wave. June is here. June is here already. The chart was December 0.3, January 0.6, February 0.6. This was the predictive chart, right? There's a predictive chart and the results chart. June. June. On the predictive chart, 
changed a few times and it was set at a 2.1. July predictive chart, this is predictive, is set at a 7.3. Right? This month, June, 2.1. What does that mean? Well, let's go over that. Can we go over that? Have you guys ever heard of the clouds? And, and, and honestly, I'm not, this is not offensive, but it didn't matter if you believe in a round or flat earth, okay? But at sunset and at sunrise, you can see these clouds that are way up in the atmosphere. Right? I mean, they're way up there. These type of clouds are 250,000 feet. Right, they're way up there above the earth. But you can't see them because they are somewhat translucent, right? You see them in certain areas on occasion. They carry a lot of colors, and for the most part, nobody really notices them. But they're becoming more and more apparent. They carry colors. Now, we have a problem with clouds that high up anyway. Number one, right, number one, you have to have some type of dust or something for clouds. You have to have dust molecules or something like that so that the ice can stick to it, right? You have to have dust, you have to have moisture. That high up, where's this dust coming from? Some have proposed it's coming from volcanism. Ash I mean, spewing up way up there in the atmosphere, which has happened before with Mount St. Helens and other things. But there's a more probable cause. And in a specific vision, you guys know I talked about those colorful clouds and how people would be dazzled, but dazzled by the colors in the clouds at sunset and sunrise, right after work and before work. And in that dream slash vision, when that took place, that was right before. Over the ocean was seen a wall of ash moving at an incredible rate of speed, burning up everything in its path. Those clouds that are way up there, it is proposed by a lot of folks that that is cosmic dust. Our atmosphere is bombarded all the time by rocks and dust and things of that nature, but it's becoming a little more noticeable than normal as of late. As that dust and these dust particles begin to build, it's going to become more and more noticeable. It really looks like rolling ice, rolling colorful ice in the skies. It's quite beautiful. But the dust that increases up there in the atmosphere will also change there. It will reflect down to the lower clouds, causing them also to be colorful. Because you've seen effects of golden skies. You've seen effects of colorful clouds. Beautiful pinks and beautiful reds and blues, greens. You've seen those effects. Normally you see, most people see in that violet to red spectrum as it intensifies it's going to become like greenish these fluorescent colors maybe you've not seen but very colorful right <clears throat> when that takes place that's a saturation effect from more and more dust coming into the upper atmosphere more and more coming into the now there are some telltale signs of some other things but this dust is certainly flowing in as it increases it's going to be an indication of something else because there will be at some point a meteor storm followed by an event all the while, this dust will cause an imbalance in the atmosphere, which will cause an imbalance in the earth. It is amazing how balanced the earth atmosphere system is. 
It really is. But it's equally amazing in how we don't pay attention to the small things like plant life, animal life, drainage in the crust of the earth. Where in the world's water going? Why is it leaving in certain areas, building up in other areas, things of that nature? And so the COT science team has been collecting data, some of those things. And we're going to run that through an algorithm for a little more precise view so we can understand a specific season. Is anybody else going to come forward and tell you about this? No. They're going to claim responsibility as saying, you know, they're going to, they're going to, like I said before, I said this three years ago when these things begin to happen, a lot of experts will come forward to explain it because they're only worried about stardom. That's why three years ago I began to talk about the winds. You guys remember that? 150 mile an hour straight line winds. Hmm? A lot of people say, oh, that's impossible. Uh, too bad for them. Arctic winds have been clocked further, and there have been winds that high right off the Arctic rim. Now that phenomenon is spreading into other areas due to ocean temperature inversions in the ocean. And in the atmosphere, a system that's swirling faster and faster. Fog is about to become a problem at low altitudes because of temperatures and water or the absence of water. This dynamics in the earth are truly changing and they're changing fast. Maybe not as fast as one second or something like that, but in the scale of time and our preparedness to handle it, very fast, too fast. June 2.1, that number stands for a potential impact of events on this earth, 2.1. An increase in radiation. That'll go right through the clouds, be absorbed into the surface of the earth, causing strange temperatures and changes in the sun. July is forecasted. These are predictive numbers based upon data. July, it is predicted to be a 7.3. Any prediction of mankind based upon data is not prophecy. It could or could not be, it could go the opposite direction. But so far, well, it's had an expected effect. It is forecasted in October, that number goes up to a 21. Now I'm I'm telling you, it is it is not something that should be sensationalized, talked about too much. Because I don't want to sit here and talk too much about doom. Harm. That number could increase based upon the earth, its response. It affects magnetism. Therefore, it will affect the brain. They know that from CERN. They know how delicate neural systems in the body are. And if any of you have ever worked with artificial intelligence or have attempted to develop those things at home, you already know you need a neural network to do it. Google has a neural network. Microsoft has a neural network. There are a few other companies who have a neural network. And what that is, is a replication of the pathways. Your nervous system in your body. Neurons firing or not firing. And that's where it stems from. They all carry them and a lot of software is driven by them. It is a replication of the human brain. Quantitative computing has made the rest of it possible. In other words, it's given a type of life to AI. 
It doesn't matter if people believe it or not, because you've been utilizing it and interacting with it. It's been feeding you, and you have been feeding it. Decisions in all countries are being made based upon predictive systems. Right? We're teaching algebra this month. It's going to begin this month. And programming this month. We'll get into a pendulum formula. You'll see what you can utilize that for. How interesting those formulas can be. But they're utilized in artificial intelligence, and that's just one of a bunch. You'll see the logic behind it. And if you really understand it, you're going to say they must have accomplished this a long time ago, and you'll come to a truthful conclusion. But technology has gone further than what you think. Like the artificial blood cells that they have. You didn't know that? Hmm. There are certain chemicals that they're using. Or you can go a month without sleep. With no side effects. You have to get sleep after that time, but you won't be tired. Maybe you didn't know about that either. Like the neurological chips that they have already been using in veterans to connect to limbs, not just prosthetic limbs, limbs that respond to the brain like a person's normal limb. You know what they're working on now so they can perfect it? Pain feedback. You have to have feedback of pain in those artificial limbs. That will help the user of that limb to protect it from damage. They're trying to increase life cycle of those limbs also. But they've already done it. They're just improving upon it. It was under the guise, under the budget of research for the VA through DARPA. There are many other things that have already been done. That fictitious plane you guys have heard about, the Aurora. Right? Well, they just come out with it. Project designation. Aurora is in there. A plane of incredible speed. It's not huge. It's incredibly fast. Been testing it for years. Because it's come out, that means they have something better because you're always at least two or three projects behind. They only release those things that they can release. Technology is much further than what you think. Back in the 60s, most of the military helicopters that you see were designed back in the 60s. You think they're modern, right? To modernize something is simply to put a new dashboard on it. A few capabilities, but the airframes, the overall aeronautics of the craft are, well, they're old or much further along than what you think. As a result of that, it can change the entire paradigm or how you perceive your, the truth of your environment. That's what a paradigm is. It can change that once you begin to know about certain things. Right? Like the fact everybody's worried about privacy. Aren't you worried about privacy? But we have forgotten about dentistry, fillings, implants, right in the mouth, right? Forget about that. You also forget about sound waves being converted into an image. That image being high definition. That a person can carry with them, powered by their body, right? through biofeedback systems, which means you can talk to a person, that person can record you without a device on them because it's in their teeth or in their retina. Hmm. Those are little tools, surveillance tools. Normally CIA and agencies like that use. Instead of putting these goofy looking microphones all over the place, the cameras that you see 
at stoplights and things of that nature, right? That's so you can see them. How about that? Isn't it funny how some of you know this, that the extraction of data, the perspective is not from the camera on the stoplight. So then where in the world is it? And how can you go through a 360 degree view of an individual's car? You can see the front of the car, the back of the car, the top of the car, inside the car, a little below the car, but there's only one camera, one stoplight. How can that be done? You're looking at the camera. You identify that as the camera. Therefore, you think that's the camera. All you had to do was look at all these cell phone towers. They're utilizing microwaves. Now, what can you do with a microwave? You can have an image based on a wave. Light is a wave, right? If you're not caught up in ether. But light is a wave. Sound is a wave. Radiation is a wave things or waves all you have to do is know the frequency if you know that frequency you know how fast it should take for that sound to return and by doing so you have a three dimensional image and because they use multi spectrums you can not only get the outside of something but you see we utilize x-rays and things of that nature that can pass through materials. So why stop at x-rays? Why not use a harmless microscopic beam, each one designated to look at the surface of something, right? Beyond the surface of something and the interiors of something and then create a three-dimensional image. It's not hurting anybody, so they say, because you're right there near a transmitter radiation transmitter called a cell phone you can develop a picture based on sound and because everybody has a cell phone and you don't know what the cell phone companies are doing without return data the one thing we do know is that your data is being processed all the time you don't know where that data is going so all that sound data all the imagery and sound and detection data where is it being sent to in order for your phone to work it's got to go back to designated places that the company has that has to be processed by massive facilities Thus, you have a three-dimensional image of everything. So you don't have to use cameras on the streets unless you're in an isolated place where nobody has a cell phone. Nobody cares about those areas. It's far too interesting. When you get a high-definition, three-dimensional image that can see through materials by sound because everybody has a cell phone. By the way, when you're inside of your car, your car is also equipped with the same thing. So those sound waves, now you don't have to send anybody Right? You don't have to send uh, harmful things through something to get the interiors because you're doing it yourselves. Remember the push for everybody to have cell phones? So in essence, the entire surface of the earth in a lot of places has been turned into one big, huge sensor. So if that is the case, if that is the case, if, I say if that is the case, in the world that you occupy and live in, is a construct. Your rights are loosely defined. Mankind is not doing this. Mankind made the equipment that's doing it. Making denied all day because in truth they're not doing it. Your cell phone is. The servers are. Data collection points are. Running a program, right? You wouldn't you don't care that you signed, you agreed to an agreement before you utilize your cell phone that your cell phone would collect information and that third parties could collect it but your cell phone has to utilize that data to communicate you're okay with your cell phone spying on you so long as the person does not that's how they get you isn't that funny hmm? is your cell phone doing it now with the advent of AI all these systems are being interlinked together one highly efficient thing. Now, if that is the case, that means a brand new infrastructure is already taking place. And we've already been a part of it. And if we have already been a part of it, then specific things are being designed to move us emotionally, have you noticed? How many have noticed that it's almost like things are being specifically designed to move us emotionally, to steer us emotionally? 
And what I'm speaking of are, are events. Likes and dislikes. Wedges between people. The, the perfect subject to cause division or unity. But not at the command of men. Strange. So something has a type of dominance in these kingdoms that we're not aware of. Because when you think something is going to happen, it doesn't. And when you think something won't happen, something you never thought of takes place. How can that be? I mean, you have to be right at least, what, 10% of the time? You can't be wrong 100% of the time, no more than anybody can be right 100% of the time. So how in the world are these things taking place? It's our infrastructure. And if you go outside of the infrastructure, right, you're doomed because you can't live outside of the infrastructure. All these older towns have been turned into dust, have you noticed? They have two options. You won't find a town who has not conformed to their new infrastructure. I find that amazing. No matter where you go, if a town is operational, they have to have communication now. They have to have a portion of the infrastructure. And if that is the case, there's nowhere you can go. There's nowhere you can go. You can't isolate yourself. You can't escape this earthly system. You, you just can't do it. You can try all day, but you cannot do it. And if that is the case, then society has shifted and changed the old society is only alive by way of television and the way we live our lives. And it would take nothing to introduce a new society. All anybody would have to do is cut your line or to not give you access. Then you would know what an outsider is. And in order to be back on the inside again of those things you are accustomed to, you'd sign anything. Somebody asked me today and said, look at all this stuff in Windows 10 update. Should I agree with this or not? My answer was this. If you're going to use the computer, you have no choice. If you don't want to use your computer, don't agree with it. But if you want to use that computer for anything, you have no choice. That's, that's a fact. Right? So guess what? You've been primed for what? What have you been primed for? To accept citizenship into the end time kingdom now I'm not talking about God's kingdom that citizenship in that kingdom one of the mechanisms is communication it terrifies people not to know what's happening outside next door we are so used to having instant communication we are so used to being able to look on our phones for a forecast, to check events, to console ourselves, that if we didn't have it, we would feel like non-humans. We would feel like true outcasts. And if we're pressured now through circumstances, how much more would that pressure be when no one will lift a finger for you? So you've been primed to accept citizenship into a global community, haven't you? I mean, it snuck in so fast, so fast, you didn't even know it. And there always has to be an infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, that's only a, a, a smidget of what we call the kingdom of the beast. You see, the spirit has to be there first, doesn't it? Spiritual things have to be established first. Before the manifestation. Spiritually, Antichrist, that Antichrist spirit was, has gone out a long time ago. It's been under construction the entire time. Which is why nation is against nation. Is there division in the kingdom of God? No, there isn't. But there is division in the kingdom of men. And the kingdoms of men have been usurped by the kingdom of the beast. How did that happen? Because man began to answer themselves. 
and they received inspiration from a source other than the Father. And they began to operate by their lusts. And they handed their kingdom over to the beast. Now the kingdoms of the earth have become the kingdoms of the beast. They're not necessarily the evil that you understand. But we are addicted to it. You see, we live our lives based upon what somebody else has made us, not based upon what God has already established. We live our lives based upon the creations of men, don't we? How many of you can live your life absent all creations of men? How many of you can go out into the woods taking no clothes, no anything, and begin a brand new life? Not everybody can do that. Because you have to know how to hunt. You have to know how to build a structure. You have to know how to extract. Well, oh, and by the way, it's illegal. So you can't do it. Just can't do it. It's illegal. <laughs> People have found out, well, I'll just disconnect my computer from the Internet and everything else. And then you find out half your stuff doesn't work. Everybody's upgraded to a new operating system. Then after so long, you don't believe me, unplug your Windows 10 device from the Internet. You got an extra one, just unplug it, let it run by itself, watch what happens. After so many days, you're going to be dead in the water. It's going to seek a verification, authentication from the Internet. You don't have the Internet, your computer is not going to do anything. Think you're clever enough to bypass it? It's built into the operating system, thus your data has become part of the operating system. You can't access anything like that. Okie says, does XP count as new? I have an XP machine. Never been plugged into the internet whatsoever. And I have to have it that way. Have to. But if you buy an XP machine, hook it up to the internet, first thing you're going to notice is that you have no protection. None. They're forcing out all previous operating systems. Why? Because Windows, Windows 10... Is in fact, you know, it's so funny. You know how they say these new operating systems, you have to have a more robust system to run them. That's not true. I have a system that was running off of Windows XP with a single processor. Windows 10 works at a similar speed than XP does on that old system. But I had to trick the operating system into believing it was running from a dual processor, not a single processor. I had to change the language between the hardware, right, and the software. Only if you know how to do that can you run this antiquated equipment successfully. That means I can unplug it from the internet anytime I want. But you have to do a lot of code revisions in that thing. There's a lot of things you have to throw away. It's almost like it's a dead man switch right there in Windows 10, right there on your iPhone and everything else. If something happens, you can forget about your device. You can forget about it. So what I'm telling you is that the, the, the system of the beast has already been built. It's in operation. They had to get you used to it to trust it first. All these license agreements that you have to agree to before you utilize something. Do you remember how skeptical we were and they acted like they were concerned about your, your privacy? But, but when you look at the financial gains of each of these companies, you realize something. Wait a minute. They have been utilizing my information in their computer programs to make profits off somebody else. They have categorized me as a specific type of buyer and have fine-tuned their marketing campaigns based upon my data. So they didn't sell it to anybody else. They profited fully off of mine. And now, by law, because you utilize the internet, internet security forces around the world have to have access to the hubs of all communications. Isn't that funny? They call it data. I call it your information. Do you have privacy? Not against your devices. No, you don't. Don't have it. Hmm? Isn't that strange? Didn't begin this way, but the beast system is coming. And what does that mean? What does that mean? What does man often do? They will take something. They will take all things that are pure in the beginning. And over the course of time, turn it into something evil, like a knife.
A knife is a good tool, especially in the wild, but it's also used to murder people. In it. A gun is a good tool when you have to have it to survive in the wild. And bullets, but what do they use it for? To kill somebody else. You see what I'm saying? So then anything that is designed without maturity, without morale, it's a weapon. It becomes a weapon. That's why in the Bible you'll see there are certain scriptures where it says they will learn war no more. All this conflict and violence, nobody's going to learn it anymore. So they take what could be very good and turn it into something extremely horrible. Right? It's funny to say that. That's why Von Braun had a, had a, uh, he, he was scared and he had a conscience at the very end. Von Braun, NASA's first director. You might as well say their boss because he fired everybody who didn't agree with him. Anyway, he, he had a actual conscience at the end. He really did. And he begged them not to make space weapons. But then he gave us a story. Him. He is the reason we had rockets in the first place. And well, let me tell you why. <clears throat> he begged them not to do that because that's exactly what something that scared him to death wanted. Because he knew that when men did that, that's how they're going to fight God and his holy ones coming. People have got it backwards. Listen, all these movies show these aliens coming from other worlds. No, th those are nothing more than demons in a strange disguise that people have been conditioned to receive. But God will come with 10,000 of his holy ones. Those are the ones... They're going to try and destroy God and His Holy Ones coming to this earth. Isn't that funny? A lot of people think, oh, Satan is coming. No, the demons are here. They're going to be in a different form. Mankind will accept them. But they're going to try and fight God and His Holy Ones coming from the heavens. You see that in the Bible. It's fulfillment of a prophecy. Every eye will see him. What's that mean? If every eye is going to see him coming in the clouds with power and great glory, where is he coming from? Earth? No. See? If your eye is going to see him, isn't that a flesh thing? Earth will be set up against God and his holy ones. Thus you have the kingdom of the beast and a mental shift in how men think. And you had to have the internet to do that. You had to have digital communications. That you may manipulate the data that people are seeing so that they will feed in to your brand new paradigm, the beast's paradigm. I don't feed into the beast paradigm. Because I won't play a role in division. I refuse. I've done that before. I won't do it again. Sticking up for one side or the other does not matter. When it's in the kingdoms of the world, it's for the wrong kingdom. I found that out the hard way. Because I thought maybe there was a good side to these kingdoms you're wrong, wrong, wrong how can there be a good side to these kingdoms then you get into the mark of the beast your citizenship did you think about that last night you won't be able to buy or sell save he that hath the mark of the beast the name of the beast or the number of his name that's citizenship you see, to be a citizen, don't you have to pledge your allegiance? I find it amazing. There's certain things. It's so funny because a group of gentlemen, we were talking about this three weeks, four weeks ago. And we began to talk about the pledge that people will have to make to be a citizen of the kingdom of the beast. And then they start talking about utilizing Donald Trump and start talking about how he wanted people to pledge their loyalty. I'm not saying Donald Trump's a beast. I don't believe he's a beast. I just simply don't believe he's a beast. But the language of the system of which, of which he is now appointed is using the language. When you're in a position like the President of the United States, you can never forget, yes, he is going to be influenced by every principality and power over this region and that's why we have to pray for our leaders they are in a life and death struggle and we simply don't see it that way 
We blame them when something goes wrong, not understanding they are just pawns, flesh, in a game of evil inspiration or good inspiration. They hurt just like we hurt. They get headaches just like we do. I know that you have been educated on the internet. And most people believe that those, all those letter, leaders are, are lizards. That's, that's, that's the going thing. See, I had to do my homework on what people believe. People do believe that. Well, don't pray for them. They're lizards. What are you when you are given over to sin? When you sin, of what mind did you operate? Hmm? When he says, Mike, does God want us to turn it all off? Here's what he wants you to overcome, not turn off. To overcome these things in the world that tempt us by way of the flesh. That our spirits grow enough that no temptation will ever exist in us. You see, we need to be vessels of the spirit of the living God. And if we are vessels of the spirit of the living God, Acts chapter 2, I will pour my spirit out on all flesh. Right? If we are vessels of the Spirit of the living God, then guess what? How can anything enter into us that is not God and tempt us? But we are to be as wise as serpents, as harmless as doves. Well, the only way you can be as wise as a serpent is to know about the serpent. But you can't do that if you're prone and going to be tempted by the serpent. And the only way you can be tempted is to have that thing within you. It's called lust. So we need the Spirit of our Father first. We do. How many of you can turn off your memory? How many? Type of one if you can turn your memory off. I'm, I'm not talking about the ones that have a bad memory like I do. I mean, turn your memory off. How many of us can do that? You can get, you turn it off, right? Rick says, no, no. I'm waiting on somebody to say one. I'm going to say, well, how did you remember the type of one? See, I was trying to set you up for failure. So what I'm saying is this. Somebody says, should we turn it all off? It's too late. Your mind is full of what the world has to offer. You must overcome it. Then it does not matter. It becomes knowledge. That would almost be like Gabriel and Michael saying, Well, Lord, should we just forget about Satan? No. They've overcome him by their choice to, to obey the Lord. They didn't fall. They've overcome him. He can't do anything. We don't forget about Satan. We've overcome Satan right to be as wise as a serpent to even to, even to see that a serpent is wise is wisdom how about that if you turn it all off you're not going to be very wise because you won't know the conditions of which you live you'll be detached from the world totally but you must have christ that the world doesn't overcome you but you overcome the world because christ overcame the world and if we be within him we too have overcome so, so guess what the ultimate goal of us is? To be within Christ and never leave our position in Christ, no matter what. He's already overcome the world. If we abide in him, we too have overcome the world. The Lord will not have us ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy, plots, plans, and things of that nature. If that is the case, we're always going to know what Satan is up to. But he will never, ever cause us to slip because he's lost his power over those who abide in Christ. I know a lot about the guy, right? Because to a degree, we were all agents of this guy. But it's not act like we were not. I take it to heart, though. I know every temptation I ever had. I don't deny them. I know them. I have overcome them. And they are not temptations. It turns into wisdom. Now I know how the flesh can be tempted, even in you. See, that's wisdom. I don't shut it off. I'm not prone to it. No need to shut it off. I see wickedness. Right? I see it all the time. But I will not be moved. Because I choose righteousness. And the only righteousness I can choose is Christ. Because of myself, I, I have no righteousness. In Him, I can be the righteousness of Christ. That's how that works. It is not of you. It is not of your internal works, but it is the gift of salvation upon your life. 
that you're able to overcome the wiles of the devil. You see, to put on the armor is to abide in Christ and all those things he said. I know for a fact I can be torn to pieces without the armor. I lived that life for a while. Torn to pieces. Smashed to bits. Utterly destroyed. In Christ, I can truly do a work for the kingdom of God. And I will not do a work for Lucifer himself. Sometimes, you can hate Satan so bad that you find yourself doing his works anyway. Because with him, it's not black and white. But with Christ, it is. With him, there are deceitful, deceptive things and trickery used in all forms. With Christ, it is straightforward. With him, you must fully adopt everything in him and do things by your own power and pride to succeed. With Christ, it is not by my power nor by my might. It is all by him, and it's also done in love. Through him, Satan has no power against me so long as I choose Yahshua HaMashiach every second of my life. In other words, you become untouchable. I don't care what man can do to me. I care what I do for my Father in heaven who gave his only begotten Son that I may have eternal life and be forgiven of all these rotten, deadly things I've done in my life. That's what I care about. I care less about mankind and these things of mankind. But I care about how my Father looks at me and how he knows me. You see, I care about how he sees me. And he sees right through me. So that kind of makes everything else unnecessary. And unfortunately, as time goes on, when the demonic battle begins and men perish in horrible ways, by then it will have been too late. A man would rather die a trillion times and to face this war with the demonic entities coming. They will devour mankind. I mean, devour them. And man will be stuck in their bodies with sensations of anguish and pain even before they are judged. Because they served Lucifer and themselves. And they rejected Christ. Men ought not fear war, what man can do. We ought fear the Lord who keeps us from such things. There is a darkness you have not imagined. And I hope you can never imagine nor see it. Unfortunately, that darkness is coming to this world. It is being born on this world. The gates of the depths of this earth will open up and they will flood everywhere and if a person is not within Christ then they will know evil they don't know evil right now they don't know anguish they don't know torment but they will and it's our job to first make sure that our servitude is in truth because if we're playing we're going to be that demonic entity's next meal. It will happen. It is going to happen. And it is not some nuclear war nor terrorist mankind ought be afraid of. True evil is coming. It will come. But for those who are truly in Christ Jesus. He will shelter them through that storm. He will hide them within himself. That's what he'll do. And that's why that scripture says, you meek of the earth who hath wrought his judgment in the earth. Seek the Lord that you may be hidden. In that day of his wrath, you seek him with all of what you are now before anything begins. Because if you're not hidden, 
you'll try to hide. Men are going to hide and have heart attacks because even they didn't expect it. The Illuminati does not expect what's actually coming. Devil worshippers don't expect what's actually coming. And it's coming. They have no idea the depth of darkness. But it's coming for them. It is not coming for the righteous. And the only way a person can be righteous is to be the righteousness of Christ, to be within him in truth. So if you're worried about what the next guy is doing, more than you're worried about how your Father in Heaven is looking at you, you're in trouble. You're in bad shape. Because you too think it's a game, a joke. I can assure you the men that saw a smidget of the depth of darkness are not alive right now. Some right now to this day live every moment in a great fear. And they don't care if somebody, some man would torture them. They know what they faced. And it's seen with more than the eye. You think the eye is the only way you can see? You're wrong. Because man will not be able to shut his eyes nor turn his head away from that true darkness. And it's coming anyway. And they are not prepared. And they don't really know the depth of it. They have been seduced. There's no glory in that. There's only anguish and pain and a deep regret. Men will seek death and will not find it. Can you imagine that? Wanting to die and death will flee from you. And your Father in Heaven has held all these things back. See, people are sitting there saying, well, when is the time? No, you stop that because He's been holding things back on purpose that you may be within Him before He unleashes it. You know what's holding them back? He is. If He lifts His hand away, there's no more grace and mercy. Grace and mercy is holding all of them back. You think, have you heard of stories? Special operators. Certain officials who have come face to face with something they can't even explain. That can scarcely be killed. And it was just one of them. That's not even darkness. That's called a leftover. The darkness is even below them, locked up in the bowels of the earth, and they will be set free. God sent us this time that we may be positioned in truth in Him. Because anybody who's not positioned in truth in Him will face the true darkness that will come directly from the bowels of this earth. And if I told you in the earth were many dimensions that you couldn't imagine, well, that would be enough. In form and in appearance, your body will stop and cease to exist if you saw them. And it is your Father in Heaven who is holding that back and you're asking for that time to come sooner and quicker? Are you really assured that you're residing in Christ? That you're handling everything according to His Word? Is there anything undone in your life? I sure hope and wish and pray. Yes, I said wish. That we can all get it right because I don't know about you, I certainly am. Only a fool would disregard the truth. And all fools will perish. It is mercy if a person dies right now. Because you don't want to die in the time where the gates of the bowels of this earth are released and it will happen. And your Father in Heaven is long suffering to usward. He doesn't want any of us to perish. And so, yes, He is. He has been holding this back. That's why it says God is not slack 
concerning his promises, as men count slackness, but as long suffering to usward, do you understand now? It is his hand that they cannot cross, they cannot ever cross his barrier. And he placed grace and mercy around this world. That means that grace and mercy is going to be lifted. Are you in your rightful position with your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Because that grace and mercy will be lifted from the face of this earth. And then people will know what darkness and evil truly is because they don't know now. They don't. Folks, I want to say God bless you. Again, this is, what is this? This is the 14th. 14th. I want to mention this too before I go. I'm going to say if between today and tomorrow you guys want to be of assistance to two families that we have in COT, we do this from time to time, then do so. Whatever you land to do, God bless you for doing that. I'm going to join everybody Friday, possibly tomorrow evening. I'm not sure yet. I think Angela is doing it broadcast in the morning. Is that right, Angela? Tomorrow morning? That will be on Begotten Son Ministries. So we will uh, switch our streaming to that, okay? To Pastor Scott. Pastor Scott, thank you for your day-to-day -day diligence and your praise and worship. You are one valued brother. So are all of you who participate in the lifting up of one another and directing people to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Angela says 10.30 Eastern Time. Okay, 10.30 Eastern Time. Thank you, Dr. V, for your servitude as well. All of you all in there and the science team and those and, and you guys, just God bless you all. Ladies and gentlemen, be of strength and be of truth. And let's help one another stay in truth, please. Time is running out. Time is running out. God bless each and every one of you.